For those of us early Apple Silicon adopters, we've been wanting to calibrate our display for some time, but we really can't do it yet because most of the software that are out there are not yet compatible with the M1 processor. Well, X-Rite have delivered on their promise and they have released i1 Profiler version 3.4. This is a Mac only release, there are no new features. However, it brings full compatibility with Apple Silicon, the M1 processor, and also Mac OS 11 Big Sur. So let's have a test of this version calibrating our Apple M1 computer. I'm Art and Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. As it is filming, x have only released i1 Profiler that's compatible with Apple Silicon. I'm fairly sure that i1 Studio will be following shortly. Make sure you stay tuned to my channel for that update. I'll also leave a direct link to download this i1 Profiler version in the description below this video. Now let's look at the setup. I have my Mac Mini M1 processor, x i1 Display Pro Plus, which is a colorimeter to run the calibration, and also BenQ PD3420Q. This is part of their Pro Design Display. It is a 34-inch ultra-wide screen, which is really awesome, and it can show really great color gamut on this display too. The color mode that I have chosen right now is Display P3 because it is the largest color gamut that this panel can show. So I want to maximize the color gamut that can calibrate this display too. In testing this program, I found out a few things. i1 Profiler, this update is still running on Apple Rosetta 2 translation layer. That's perfectly fine as long as we can go in and calibrate our display successfully. And we can, so that's not a problem at all. I'm sure that XWrite will update this to run natively on Apple Silicon code base in the future too, guaranteeing that the program is going to have future compatibilities with Apple processors that get released in the future and also new Mac OS version that will come up later in the year and also in the following years as well. To check and see the process that your application is running, whether it is native or running on an Intel process, you can launch Activity Monitor. For instance, I have i1 Profiler already launched. If we find that process, we can see that Kine is still listed as Intel. Again, it doesn't really matter. And if you want to check, another way to do it is to find the application itself, highlight it, press Command I or right click, and then click on Get Info. You will see right there at the very top, it says Kine Application Intel. That means it's still running on the Intel process. But again, this works just fine, so no big worries there. Now let's start with the calibration process. Before you start the calibration, there are settings you need to disable on your Macintosh and Apple Silicon computer are included in that list. So I'll leave a link to the video up here and in the description below. Watch that before you run your calibration. This being said, many of the settings I'll go through in this calibration process are gonna be rather quick. If you want to see a full explanation of why you choose those settings or what range you should choose and why, I'll leave a link to my full calibration video up here and in the description below again. Watch that to get the full answer and a full guide on how to use i1 Profiler. Otherwise, for the most part, everything else will be very similar to that guide. I will have my calibration mode to set to advanced and I'll come here and click on profiling. So it's going to adjust the program a little bit, move it to where it wants it to be on the display. For this, I have only the BenQ PD3420Q linked up to it, so that's perfectly fine. White point, I will set the D65. Pretty much most of these default settings work just fine. Luminance, I have mine set to 80 Candela. The range between 80 to 120 tend to work best, and that is my recommendation. You can also find out in another video I made as well why I recommend this range. Gamma is set to standard, which is 2.2, contrast native, and also flare correction and ambient light smart control is unchecked. Click on next, and for the profile setting, I'll leave everything at default, which is perfectly fine. For patch set, normally I recommend using a large patch set, but because we're running this demonstration and I want this calibration to go through quick, I am choosing small. But when you do it on yours, choose large so that you get the best calibration possible. Click on next again. And right here under display hardware setup, automatic display control is unchecked because I don't want the program to be talking and automatically adjusting the brightness on the display. I want to control that process. So I have this check right below it. Adjust brightness, contrast, and RGB gain manually. That's perfect, we'll click on Start Measurement. Rotate the device, hang it on the screen. Make sure it stays flat, perfect. We'll click on Next. This is going to do the initial measurement to get us 
the brightness value of the display as it stands right now. You may need to adjust the brightness up or down depending on what setting is currently on your display. However, because I already run a calibration test on here, this should be close to 80 and it lands perfectly at 80. So that is fantastic. Also, I'm calibrating this in a fairly bright environment and this will work for you as well. So you don't need to be in a dark room or anything like that because around the opening of all these calibration devices, if you look at it, there's always a felt lining or foam or something that eliminates any stray light coming in. All right, from here, Click next and this is going to start the calibration process that will calibrate 118 patches. I'll come back when this process is done. We'll do a profile validation and I'll give you my thoughts about I want profiler running on Apple Silicon. This is a really great moment. There you have it, 118 patches in a blink of an eye. This is doing the last verification process right now where it's doing a iterative profiling, double checking some of the values that I've measured before to make sure it's absolutely correct and accurate. Now that it's done, I'll bring the device down. Click next. It tells me calibration was successful. That's great. We'll go to the ICC profile. And what I'm going to do is give this a name. I'll name this with my display name, for example, BenQ PD3420Q, you see that? I'll also put in the color mode I'm using right now, which is Display P3. I'll abbreviate that as DP3, and I'll also put in a date for my calibration. It's always a great idea to put in the date for the calibration. This way you know when that profile was created by just looking at the name without having to inspect the file itself. From here, you can click user level distribution. It doesn't do anything at all. Profile reminder, I have this set to none right now. You can have it set to remind you. Ambient light monitoring off and I'll click on save profile. So it says the profile was saved successfully. Let's see the result that we're able to achieve. So for the white point, the target is D65 or 6500 Kelvin. I'm able to achieve 6476, super close to D65. That's really awesome. Black point, I'm able to achieve 1.53 candela. That is pretty dark for a LED backlight IPS display. So I'm pretty happy there. Luminance is directly at 80. This is really great. And contrast ratio, I have this set to native. So once we run the calibration, the contrast ratio will decrease because you're really decreasing the maximum brightness of the display. So that really has a lot to do with tonal compression happening. And this is perfectly fine. So. The contrast ratio for this display is around 524 to 1, which is still good for image editing. And this doesn't make my image too contrasty so that if I print on matte paper, it's going to be drastically different. All right. So what I'm going to do now is go to display QA and verify the profile. I am going to start this process using the x right Color Checker Classic, which is the one I use. And notice how I left the display in this position. That's because I am going to come in to validate this. If I wasn't going to do this, I'll put the display back into the normal position. So once I click on next, I'm at the measurement screen. I'll click on start measurement, rotate the device. Let's hang this on the display again. And let's see how this version of the software along with the M1 and PD3420Q is doing. So this is going to measure through the x right Color Classic, which is 24 patches, and it should go by fairly quickly. Perfect, now that that is finished, I'll take the device down, put the cover on it, put the screen back in our normal position because we're done with the calibration process now and click on next. And we're able to achieve a really awesome result. So I'm going to change the Delta E, the average and the max here. So the average we want it generally below two because anything below two is considered really great consistent color. And the maximum, I'll set this to five just in case um, if we have some values that are higher. But what we can see here right now is that the average Delta E result for this panel with Display P3 is really awesome. It's only 0.5. This is really fantastic. And the maximum Delta E for all the patches is 0.8. This result is super great and you can use this for your workflow without any issues at all. If you want to save a calibration report out to see a more thorough data, on how each of the colors are performing, you can certainly click on save report. 
I will save this out as PD 3420Q and I'll put this on M1 DP3, put the color mode there, save this out. And you can certainly add this to trending as well. This will also show you how the display is performing over time. Every time you go in and calibrate, if you add this to trending, you want the trend line to be the same or even if it goes up, if it's under two, you're okay. But if it's constantly starting to track up, you may want to check your display or check the calibration process and see what's going on. But so far, X-Ray have done a great job and I'm glad that they actually have this software out so that we can all calibrate our display and use this in a pro workflow. So if you have any questions about this, leave it in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified, and until next time, in Art We Trust.